OK? Totally distributed, NT to NT. This open step for Windows applications, a Nibware app, this Excel is obviously Excel. So there we have it. OK. Now I'm going to move over to this other machine. And I'm going to launch uh, Excel again. And now the first demo was client to client. The second demo I want to run is client to server. And as, as we talked about before, it's really hard in the Windows world to uh, write these multi-tier client server apps. So what we've done here is we've used Excel again. There's no more generic Windows tool than Excel. And we all know Excel has no notion of distribution. But it does call Olay. And so we've got about a page and a half here of, of Excel code. And let me just show it to you even. This is our Excel code here. Right? We don't have a lot of it. Right? Not a lot. And uh, it calls, OK. It calls Olay. And when it calls Olay, that gets converted by Dolay into distributed messaging. And it goes to PDO running on an HP server, which has got a database. And so I can make a very simple app. And when I say fetch locations, it's just pulling up all my locations here for me, maybe a bunch of employees. And I'll pick Hillside 2, and here's a bunch of departments. And I'll pick customer service, and here's a bunch of people. And you notice it just computed an average group salary for me. And I'll pick an employee. And this is all fetching the data over the net from HP servers running PDO with Excel making only Olay calls. Does this make sense? Isn't this cool? OK. So that is Dolay. And we think uh, early indications from some of our large customers is this is going to be really popular. The next thing that we'd like to announce here today is web objects. Now, Next has a long history with the World Wide Web, as you may know. Um, Tim Berners-Lee, uh, who is the inventor of the World Wide Web, who did that work at CERN in Switzerland, did it all on Next Step. And so the World Wide Web was actually invented on Next Step. In addition to that, as you know, we have always been compatible with the internet in terms of all the protocols we've used for distributed objects, et cetera. And we finally decided it was time for us to do something on the internet. And so we thought, what could that be? Where could we add a tremendous amount of value? And we started looking at the internet. And the internet is fundamentally a mainframe architecture, if you will. It harkens back to the 70s, where a web browser, think of it as a 3270 terminal on multimedia steroids. Okay, That's what it is. And all the wiring's done for you with the internet. And the server's like the mainframe. And all the computation, all the applications run on the server. This is a very simple model, but it has enormous benefits in its simplicity. So we looked at the client, and we said, you know, clients are going to be free. There's probably not a lot of money in client software. So let's put that aside, because um, we like being profitable. Uh, and the internet's wonderful, but a lot of people are working on that. But we looked at the server, and we said, the server's where the applications run. And that seems to need a lot of help. And we started analyzing that. And we said, you know, there's, there are four things that people are going to want to do on the server with the web. And let's examine what they are. The first one is we call static publishing. This is where you make web pages and you publish them. And they don't change until you change them. And this is what 99.9% .9 of the web is doing today. So here's an example with the Mercury Center News Service. Uh, here's another example with the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Everybody's making web pages. And that's wonderful. But no one's making much money on this yet. Because to publish static web pages, you don't really need to go out and buy fancy web server software. 
There's a hundred public domain packages out there you can get for free and just start publishing your pages. Now the second thing that we're starting to see an inkling of is where this ain't enough. Where companies now want to start providing some interactive value on the web. And we call that dynamic database publishing. That's number two. Now, perfect example of that. How many of you have seen the Federal Express website for tracking a package? Right? A lot of you, I hope. You can type in your package number here and give it the country destination and push submit. And it will look in its corporate databases, several corporate databases all over the place, pull that information together, and on the fly build a web page based on that data. Nobody ever typed it in and stored it as a static web page. It's computers building it on the fly with no human intervention. And you get back something that looks like this. Okay? So here's your air bill number. The package has been delivered. And here's a bunch of information about when it was picked up, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So they go from, from that to that with no human intervention, with a ton of data from a bunch of databases in a bunch of different places. Okay? That took them four months to write that out, by the way. Here's another example a real estate company on the peninsula named Alon Pinnell. You can plug in how many bedrooms of a house you're looking for, the price range you're looking for, and the cities, and it will come back to you and show you all of the houses in its database that meet that criteria all over the web. A third example, web crawler. I'm sure a lot of you have used web crawler. It's the second most popular site on the web. By the way, it runs on Next Step, totally. America Online just bought this company that did this and um, runs all on Next Step today. And what you do is you type in keywords to search on. It searches through a massive index database and comes back with places on the web that you might go to find what you're looking for. Again, looking through massive databases, building web pages on the fly, and coming back. This is dynamic database publishing. And we're going to be seeing this explode, we believe, next year as companies want to bring this kind of service value to their customers. The third thing that people are going to want to do on the web will take a little bit longer to happen, and that's commerce, where you can actually buy something over the web, pay for it with a credit card, have it delivered with Federal Express, let's say. Now, the interesting thing about commerce is, is that it's a massive job. Everybody focuses on the credit card problem. That's a small part of it. The larger problem is medium and large size companies have to tie their web into their existing order management system. Well, why is that? Well, you can't tell somebody that a certain Walkman is in stock on the web when you just shipped it out five minutes ago to Circuit City. You've got to have one order management system to keep track of all this stuff. And everybody's order management system is custom. And you've got to write a custom app to tie the web into your order management system. That's why it's going to take a little bit longer to do real commerce over the web. And lastly, but not least, is internal web usage. We see this exploding now. What's this all about? Well, there's simple publishing internally, but that's not what I mean here. What I mean here is that IS departments have got a great idea. When they want to write a custom app, like a time off app, right? let's automate the vacation reporting in our company. Let's write a time off app. Today, we have to write a version for Macintosh, for Windows 3.1, for Windows 95, maybe for Unix. We have to distribute these all over the place. Why not write it on the web and let everybody get their own web browser, and we only write it once? And it's fully distributable, so our sales offices can use it too. And people are starting to look at this in droves. And so internal custom apps on the web are going to be a very big market, we think. So these are the four things we think people are going to be doing with the web in the next few years. Static publishing, dynamic database publishing, commerce, and internal custom apps. What's interesting about this is that three of the four require custom applications. Static publishing does not. But dynamic database publishing does. As I mentioned, that Federal Express app took four months to write. The others took longer. Commerce, major work to tie the web into your order management system, and obviously internal custom apps by definition. Well, custom or us. That's what we've been doing for 10 years. <laughs> so how can we bring value to this? Okay, And this turned out beautifully. How do we help people take input from the web, process it, go to databases, get data, bring it back, process it?